You remember the green tree practice fields in the old days. The opponents that Miami would face Monday through Friday on their own team were always tougher than the foes they would face on Saturdays. Can we start getting back to that? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Let's bring in a good friend of ours here, a longtime colleague of mine at WQAM Sports Radio in Miami, former Miami Hurricanes punter, but he's very versatile. He also worked at some wide receiver. I don't want anyone like what are you talking to the punter for? This is the most <laughs> athletic punter I've ever known. Brian Monroe. What's up, Brian? What's good, my dude? Nice to have you back on. So, you know, Brian, uh, you you got to Miami 2003. So, you know, it was kind of on the tail end, but Miami was still at the peak of their powers. They were still a national powerhouse in 2003. Uh, pro bowlers at virtually every position, some future pro football Hall of Famers on that team. Can you describe what the competition level was like on the green tree practice fields back in those days? So you kind of mes- you mentioned it in your intro. The practice was harder, more competitive than our games. Like legit. Like when you had guys like, you know, John Vilma going against Frank Gore one on one, Sean Taylor going against Kellen Winslow. Like it just it was different. Like, you know, I, I had more fun watching practice than I did watching the games. You know, as a punter, you get a free seat. So it was <laughs> It was impressive to see these guys battling. And you have dudes that came in as freshmen that were fifth string on depth charts, but then turned out to be a first-round pick because that's how much competition you had at each position. And it's just one of those things where, you you, you know, you bought your time, you, you fought, you know, you learned, um, and you battled, and then you got your chance. And, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. Everyone goes, can you get back to that? Mm. Can you? You can. But it's going to take a lot because obviously the dynamics of college football has changed now, right? So we get the transfer portal. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to sit by their time. They just want to instant gratification play right now, you know. So that's going to be the tough part for this coaching staff. But I trust Coach Crystal Ball and, and and the staff he's put together. And you bring an educated opinion because just for those who don't know, Brian goes to a lot of practices. Like he's very very close with the program and. He gets to watch more of most practices than I do. When I go as a credentialed member of the media, they they only let the media watch certain periods. When you got a VIP former player like Brian, he's getting to watch some stuff that I don't get to watch. Uh, so you've been going out there a lot, you know, going back to probably the Mark Richt and, and Manny Diaz days. You've been out there now for the Cristobal days and, and spring football this year. Are, are you seeing rising levels of competition? Because I know it's something players have talked about. Like I, I can remember um, um, to Corey Couch telling me that he feels practices have been a little faster so far because there's just a little bit – the depth chart's deeper with hungry guys than it was over the last couple of years in his opinion. Yeah, so that, that competition is what you have to bring in to be any, uh, any great or successful college team. It's just what it is. If you look at the best teams from Alabama, you look at their roster, top to bottom, they got first-rounders all, all over the field. So that's exactly what Chris Ball wants to bring in. For me, first practice, it was a lot faster than it's been in the past, which you want to see. right? Nobody's lollygagging. Nobody's walking in the field. Everyone's getting chewed out from – Everybody from the position coach to Alonzo Highsmith to everybody. So that's impressive to see. But I think the thing that stood out to me was body types, right? So I feel like we've been slacking when it comes to the elite athletes as far as a body type in the last 10 years. We have freshmen coming in right now that are bigger than people that have been here for four years. <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but we have some freshmen. I'm just like, where the hell did they make that? You know, like Jaden Wayne, I think his name is number 18. I mean, he's. He's bigger than some dudes we've had as defensive end on our roster, like for years already. The two freshmen, obviously, five star tackles everyone talks about Francis Mawagoa and Samson, humongous, moved so well, great feet. Um, so it was, it was, it was good to see them out there and grinding. And I think Francis is already first team right tackle yeah. at this time. So it's good to see that. And then, you know, you mentioned a couple of names, the wide receiver room, right? So who, who's going to be the guy this year? Who's going to step up? We have been hoping for this burner, somebody to take it over the top, be a 50-50 guy. 
I do like Isaiah Horton. His body type is what you're looking for. 6'4", 210, probably pounds. Can he be that guy? Because watching his film in high school, he was the burner. He would mm -hmm. take it over the top. Colby Young's drop pounds, which I think is good for him. He looks a lot better. But to me, he's more of a red zone guy. He's a jump ball dude. He's not going to like, you know, wow you with the burning speed and stuff like that. But he's that big body you need. I think we'll still go into the transfer portal after spring and get another receiver. Yeah, I Personally. agree. And there's a couple guys, obviously, they're looking at the kid that's left USC. I think Brian's his name. Mm -hmm. And then a kid, Alabama, that was at Louisville as well. So I'm not worried about that because I feel like this coaching staff and what Chris Ball's put together as far as recruiting rooms, what those guys do, they identify talent, they go after it. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. Um, I think Chris Ball is going to bring in the right type of athlete that we've been missing at Miami for a long time, the ones that want to compete. The ones that are going to get our draft uh, picks back up because, you know, we're in a drought, you know, when it comes to draft picks. But I think he's doing everything he can right now as far as the guys he's running from the last recruiting class to this recruiting class. And I think 2024 is going to even be better. When you talked about receivers, it reminded me of something because – for at least one year, you overlapped with Kevin Beard. Like you were on the team with KB. His last year was 2003. I think that was your first year. Yep. Um, he, to me, has been one of the more fun members of that coaching staff to watch because he's just, he's so active. Like he's doing a lot of the drills that his players are doing. He's working up a sweat. Um, what was he like as a teammate? Could you kind of tell, hey, this guy's going to be a coach someday? You knew he's going to be a coach because he was a coach when we were there, literally. Like, he would literally help all the young guys out. He knew the playbook like the back of his hand. Every single route, where to be, adjustments, everything. So KB was was that dude. Um, was he a little bit, like, rub people the wrong way sometimes in the receiver room? Of course. But that's what you need, right? You need that competitive nature to, like, put somebody in their place. The one thing that these kids are going to love about KB, he's a technician. Every little detail, he's going to have you right when it comes to a receiver. So a lot of our fans know that we've had a hard time with separation when it comes to our receivers. But KB is going to teach you body control, how to create separation if you're not a 4-3 guy, you know, using your body leverage to make yourself get open. And I think that's what you're going to see the difference when it comes to receivers this year with KB. He's a hard worker. Like you said, he runs the drills. He's going to do every single route. He's sweating. He wears cleats yeah. on the field. I didn't but notice that. That's great. He wears cleats and he does the drill. And it's kind of like back in the day with Swayze, who was our strength coach. You can't have an excuse with Swayze to say, well, damn, this workout's tough as hell, but you didn't do it. Swayze did every single workout the week before we did. Wow. Because he doesn't want to hear an excuse to say, I don't know what this feels like. I do because I did it. And that's the same with KB. He's going to do every single drill and let you know, I can do it. That means you better be able to do it. I want to pick uh, Brian Monroe's brain on the new coordinators when we come back. Keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Guys, it is the perfect time to get signed up at FanDuel. I don't know why you haven't already. The NCAA tournament, of course, heating up. Now is the perfect time to get in on America's number one sports book, FanDuel, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. You just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. I have so much fun with the NBA college basketball. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Do not miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. You got nothing to lose with that uh, no-sweat first bet. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Talk with former Miami Hurricane Brian Monroe. So, you know, Brian, last year there were frustrations, uh, certainly on the offensive side and the defensive side, the offense especially. So let's start with that. Josh Gaddis out. Shannon Dawson in. Comes from that air raid background. Um, everyone seems pretty happy so far. Uh, I'm sure Tyler Van Dyke is happy to get someone who's not the same, but more similar to what he had with Brett Lashley a couple of years ago. And wide receiver recruits seem pretty happy with Shannon Dawson, as they are with Kevin Beard as well. He gets a lot of love 
from recruits. But what are your impressions so far on the raging Cajun Shannon Dawson? And how do you think Miami's personnel can fit into his offense? So I was able to, to speak to him one time um, when he first got hired, probably a week after he got hired, we were out somewhere when I was able to sit down and pick his brain for a little bit and just kind of, you know, grasping what his offense is going to be about because, you know, people think like, Oh, air race. So all of a sudden we're going to be big 12 and everything else, but that's not what he's going to bring to the table. You know, he's going to bring in new past concepts that we probably haven't had here in a while. And it's going to be a more wide open offense, but he's going to run the ball. Because if you look, I, I believe at Houston, they, I think they ran the ball like 45% of the time. So it's not like Correct. yeah, air rate of things. Oh, we're going to throw it 80%. No, it's not going to how it's going to work. But what I think fans are going to love is that he's going to let the players do what they do. Right? He's going to get the ball in their hands quick and let them work. And I think that's going to be the exciting thing for fans. And then also, he's going to open up the playbook and open up the field. We're going to go take shots, which I feel like we didn't take a lot of shots last year. And I think that's one thing he's going to bring as far as new route, new route, route combinations, route concepts, but also go downfield and attack. And what, the more he was talking, the more I was eating it up. I was like, this is what we need. We, we haven't had this in a while. Now, do we need some more personnel to probably take advantage of what he wants to bring? Yeah. But those two freshman kids that we have right now, Ray Ray and Robbie Washington, they got some, they got some juice. They got some juice. It's, it might take them a while to understand the playbook, whatever, and adapt to college. But when they do, it's going to be exciting to see, you know, smoke screens and little things, getting the ball in their hands and letting them work because they've got that. I can make one guy miss and take it 80 yards that we haven't had here in a while. The offensive line was terrible last year. Like, do, do you think, does it look fixed to you when you go out and you add JV on Cohen uh, and Matt Lee. So bo both of these guys are, are going to be big time upgrades. And, you know, you, you've got a couple true freshmen. You brought them up, Mauingoa and Okun Lola, who can probably play right away. I mean, Francis already might end up being the starting right tackle for this team. Like, is offensive line, is that no longer going to be a problem? Because it was a big problem last year. So I think it's going to be an upgrade, obviously, right? You bring in, you bring in a new bodies, you bring in proven guys, you bring in Koa from um, Cohen from Alabama. That you know the whole stat is he didn't give a sack up for two years. You got Matt Lee, one of the highest graded centers in college football last year. So you're bringing experience in. You know I've heard about Matt Lee being this great leader, great communicator. Um, it only elevates their play. Now I've always been taught by offensive linemen, you got to be a unit. You got to be one. Mm. So it's more about them gelling together outside of the field too. So they can come together on the field and be one and know, like, I know what he's thinking or going to do in this play. Do I think it's going to be perfect? Obviously not. But do I think it's going to be much improved? Of course. When you bring in so much more experience, your elevated play is going to be no matter what. Um, we also, um, you know, we bring back Zion Nelson as well from injury. Does he plug into left tackle right away? He should. And then you can say, look, that whole left side's locked down. Zion Nelson, Cohen, Matt Lee. Done. Right guard, is it Inez Cooper? He looks better as far as body shape-wise. Can he take that next step? Right tackle is going to be Francis Marigo as the true freshman. Is it going to be John Cam – I mean, not John Campbell. Um, Jalen Rivers. Jalen Rivers, who I think still is our best offensive lineman. Yeah. Period. Hands down. Is it going to be him? Because they cross-train. And I think that's a great job that they do. Um I think they should be much improved. Um, it just all depends on how they gel as a unit. So let, let's talk about the defense because there's a new coordinator as well. And um, I, I get the sense talking to folks about Lance Guidry that he he might even end up being like an even more exciting hire than Dawson. Uh, you know, I, I'd hate to like try to downgrade one guy to upgrade the other guy, but there's like Lance Guidry, the way people speak about him. I don't I don't know why he was even at places like Marshall and Western Kentucky, why he's not gotten to the power five sooner, because there seems to be this sort of consensus that he's like a rising star at defensive coordinator. Have you had a chance to meet him yet? And, and what are your impressions on what he's going to bring to Coral Gables? Yeah, I was able to meet him as well the same day I met Shannon. Um, and he just brings that energy. You know, yeah. he brings passion that, you know, we are, we are ready to just like hit somebody there at dinner. But um, what I think he brings is it seems like he's a great teacher. You know, as far as the game, he brings passion because he was a safety and that's like his baby as far as defense. Um, but what you get from the kids, too, is that he makes it easier to understand how to play defense, if that makes sense. Okay. His concept is his teaching is that the kids grasp it 
better than they have with past coaches, right? So I think that you're going to see more kids flying around and playing like fun, having more fun playing the game the way that he teaches it. Now, I told him, I said straight up when I met him, I go, I don't like you. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, I turn on Notre Dame versus Marshall. Here's this Marshall team running around. Everybody's making tackles, hitting people, getting excited. I said, I've been watching Canes football since I played. We don't run around and hit people the way that Marshall did. So I was pissed off at you. But I'm happy to have you now as a family. He goes, listen, if nobody's running around hitting somebody, they're not going to play for me. Ooh. I said, Coach, I appreciate that. Welcome to Miami. I like that. And you talked about his background as a safety, and he works hands-on with the safeties quite a yep. bit in practices. Now, a guy we haven't seen practice yet is James Williams, who's not been participating in the spring. Um, but do you – what are your opinions on James? Because he's one of those guys on Locked on Canes, very polarizing, Brian, because every time I bring up James Williams, I look at, like, the comments section on YouTube, and it's a bunch of people arguing with each other about whether he's great or he sucks and he's terrible. Uh, but, you know, James, obviously, he had great coverage grades last year tackling grades have been poor i do remind people though that he was playing through a shoulder injury for much of last year i wonder how that might have affected him and he's gigantic right he's six foot five people want to see him play in the box a little bit more than he has uh do you think maybe gidry could find maybe more creative ways to use him and do you think james is the type of guy who can really thrive in this deep well so he's a unicorn right i mean you said he's six foot five you know we haven't seen the likes of that that size probably and since uh you know obviously i'm gonna say sean see because was a teammate of mine's um and then ray ray armstrong was another freak safety but we saw what ray ray had to do right he had to go into the box when he got to the league and be an outside linebacker and i was that conversation always comes up with james oh he should be in the box he should be in the box i go let me ask you a question what does he do poor and everyone's Apple? like tackle i said so now you want to be a linebacker mm. so the worst thing he does is tackle and you want to put him in the box and get dirty like he's unfortunately he hasn't been that player as far as this hard hitting nasty safety get off me i'm gonna make this tackle right so you're not gonna put him as a backer because he doesn't want to get in the mud you know so like i always hear from my boys that are linebackers and stuff it goes listen y'all y'all do outside shit that's pretty boy stuff this is like where it's the real stuff down here. He's not that type of player, right? He, he's not. So what can you do with him? Can you make him like a, a, a Isaiah Simmons, I think was his name, from, from uh, Clemson? Mm. Can you make him that type where he plays a slot? He plays on the outside. He plays at safety. He plays down in the box. Can you make him that type of unicorn where you can move him as a chess piece? I don't know. I think he has the ability to do it. But what's holding him back to unlocking that? Is it the coaching? Could be. If there's anybody that can do it, it's going to be Coach Lance. Because listening to him, he seems to have an understanding and a passion, one, for safety play, because that's what he did. That's his baby. I mean, two, and then the one good thing that I liked about the hires, they've got guys who elevated the talent that they were at to the next level. And I feel like we haven't had that in a while. Where we have guys that go to the league, sixth round, seventh round, undrafted, next thing you know, they get a $30 million contract. Why? They elevate their talent in the league. And I think Coach Lance is going to be able to do that with our players. Elevate and identify the right guys that fit their scheme. And with James, he has to take that next step. Because to me, when it came down to what we talked about it years ago, I said Cam Kitchen is going to be the best safety out of this group. And everyone goes, but, but why? I said, Avante Williams is a freak athlete. James Williams is a freak athlete. Cam is a sure athlete. No matter what, he's going to be in the right spot at the right time. And he's going to make the tackle. I said, he's going to be the best safety out of this group. And sure enough, you know, he may be, he made me look good because now he is. He sure did. <laughs> he made me look good. You know, that's, that's one of the hits I had. Everyone else is a miss, but you know, um, <laughs> I think when you have a, a Cam Kitchens back there with Coach Lance and leading that defense, helping being that other coach on the field, it's going to take that next step. And James has got to follow in line. Beautiful. Now, since we have a uh, former Miami Hurricanes and NFL punter with us, I want to pick his brain on Miami's new punter. Lou Headley is a big loss, but Dylan Joyce hopefully can fill that void. Keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts, available free on YouTube. Thank you for making us your first listen. Make sure you make Locked on College Basketball your second listen. March to the Final Four. 
Andy Patton, Isaac Shade do a tremendous job taking you around the college basketball landscape in 30 minutes or less every day. This is the time of year to be locked on college basketball. Get it free every day, YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We are joined here by Brian Monroe, former Miami Hurricanes punter, is with us. Uh, I know that you were, uh, as everyone was, really a big fan of Lou Headley. Uh, Miami goes out, they grab another Australian punter who, you know, he looks a little bit like Lou, just with, with no tattoos, which is kind of a no. I want this guy to get tatted up, right? But Mario Cristobal said to us, he's going to remind you of Lou, but he is his own man. Like, he wants to make sure we're not lumping the two guys together. Uh, do you know anything about, uh, you know, obviously Australian background, but do you know much about what Dylan Joyce brings to the table since you are my personal punting expert? So I, I wasn't able to meet him, um, but he, he's got a good stash going on. You know, he's uh, <laughs> he's he's about thirty four, like Lou as well. You know, I'm I'm kind of happy we got into the the whole trend of being and bringing in Aussie guys because they're yeah. beasts, what they do. Um, I did ask Andy Borgallis about him, and he said he's he's legit. You're gonna love him. I said, okay, your word, we're good. Um, and again, I trust Coach Cristobal. So you know, if he tells me something about a player. I know he's going to tell you straight up what it is. You know, like, it's just one of those things where Chris Ball just keeps it real. And when he says that you'll love them as a punter, all right, we're good to go. Can can punters, this is more of a side question about you, not so, or just in general, not really about Dylan Joyce. Like, because, you know, people always look at kickers. Kickers can get into these awful slumps like Bubba Baxa, like, com you know, completely lost his mentality. The guy couldn't kick anything after a certain point. Um, and but I remember like a punter like, uh, you know, when Zach Fiegels was at Miami, he struggled. It was shank after shank. Like how much like the mental game, does that affect you as much in punting as it can affect the place kicker? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like any position, right? If you get in your own head, you're going to screw yourself up. You know, it's more about have an amnesia and if you have a shank you got to forget about it and move on you know but that takes everybody that takes your your holder your your snapper to get you out of that you know slump to help you out and say listen you got this shake it off the next one's gonna be cool but i mean any any position is like that you know a, a wide receiver with drops yeah but punters can easily be in in slumps and get in their own head about okay if you think too much right you play golf play golf not outside. well but yeah okay so it's like <laughs> golf right if you come up to here and you're frustrated and you're like, you know, this is going to suck. Like, I hate this shot, blah, 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 blah. You're probably going to shank it. Yeah. You know, if you hit it too hard, you're probably going to slice it or hook it. But if you just go up confident, normal, chill, you have a good shot. And it's the same thing with kicking. I love it. Brian Monroe, uh, awesome job as always, my friend. Um, hopefully I can host with you again, maybe on WQAM soon, or we can bring you back on this show soon. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at B underscore Monroe 15. Brian, thank you so much for the time, my friend. Have a great rest of your week. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, you, you hear my voice. So my week has been uh, my week's been good. <laughs> <laughs> you've been living. You've been living large this week. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if you had a cold or if you were out late last night. <laughs> nah, you know how it goes. You know, the, the week catches up to you. I love it. So, everyone, thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We are part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.